our world was on the brink of collapse when the dragons arrived from a place parallel to our own. They came to help us, their unhatched eggs producing a wondrous energy, able to power long buried machines we once relied upon. Eventually, the land began to heal and the spore storms calmed. But then we discovered the yolk of their eggs held the true power. Using the revived machines as weapons, our tyrannical rulers slaughtered countless dragons to take their precious eggs, undoing centuries of peace. The blink of an eye. Now, a group of rebels called the Dowsers work to save the remaining dragon eggs and restore peace to Praelar. Oh, all right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another solo tabletop Wednesday. I am Natalie, the player and host and streamer of this whole thing. Uh, and today we are playing Dragon Dowser. Um, so to inform you a little bit about Dragon Dowser, first and foremost, the current music that I played for that little intro uh, was from Hatchling Games, who made uh, Dragon Dowser. Um, they are a tabletop company. Uh, who made games such as Insper Isles, which uh, is a game dedicated to learning sign language, both uh, British and American, um, as well as some other really adorable tabletop games, uh, ranging from being inspired by uh, media such as Prince Monomoke and Legend of Zelda. Um, but they're, one of their recent endeavors uh, that we are focusing on is this one, Dragon Dowser. Um, so to speak a little bit to that, uh, as the music ends here, We'll switch it over to one of my long tracks I have for this. There we go. Uh, so Dragon Dowser, uh, that little excerpt that I read earlier is directly from the game copy that I have, uh, which as a disclaimer, I am playing a reviewer's copy. So things may change by the time this game comes out as we are leading up to its Kickstarter that is happening on May 25th. Um, so if you want to be informed about that, if you want to follow the Kickstarter, I'm going to do drop the command code Dowser uh, in chat here for those on Twitch. And then for those who are watching this later on YouTube, it will be all in the descriptions down below. But there's a direct link to uh, the Kickstarter page where you can save it uh, so you can get notified of its launch later. Um, as we maybe you want to check it out while I am playing, uh, maybe save it for later for when I'm done. We'll see. So, a little bit more about this game. It is built off of the Carta system. So for those who have seen my streams in the past, you may be familiar with the system as we played a few different games uh, that utilize this. Um, it uses playing cards and you create sort of these rows on, usually there are four by six of cards that you will travel across and you get prompts in which you have to resolve. And you will either use up resources or claim resources. So that's just the very, quick sum of the card system. Um, so with Dragon Dowser here, uh, we are playing as one of the rebels called the Dowsers. Uh, and we have a dowsing crystal that helps us um, discover um, sort of the magics of the world as I'm reading here. So you're using your dowsing crystal. You must overcome the elements, uncover ancient mysteries, avoid attentions of the a tyrannical ruler and save the last of the dragon eggs. So we'll be exploring across our card map, trying to find our eggs here. Oop, my PDF is deciding to be funky. So I will just read things as it does that. So as I said, this is by Hatchling Games, uh, designed by R Rich Oxenham, I hope I said that correctly, and written by Catherine Oxenham. Um, and I will say just off the bat, the art is delightful. I am a very visual person, so seeing 
beautiful art and logo and illustration and layout all combined together is such a delight for me. And I've seen very well laid out blocks of text, um, easy for me to read. Um, I'm someone where when I'm reading through stuff, if there's a lot of text on a page, um, especially when I'm trying to comprehend the information at like for a game, my eyes wander all over. Um, so I find it very easy to just look at the columns and it's very nice and clear with the breaking up of uh, the imagery as well as having some extra textural things that makes me a little more focused. Um, so I'll say kudos for that. Um, so reading a bit more here. Uh, so our dying earth, the climate change and conflicts have already brought humanity to its knees before colossal poisonous tornadoes we call spore storms threaten our extinction. As if hearing our death keel, dragons emerge from the parallel world to save Kralar and its people. I guess the next second disclaimer is there's going to be spoilers. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm going to try and trim the beginning. And then as we play, that's where you'll be like major spoiler inventory. If you want to play this on your own without any give to that. But you can always save this to watch later. <laughs> um, so some other information. Uh, the dragon mana, which I'm assuming is the energy from the yokes. Uh, harnessing energy from their unhatched eggs, the dragons powered machines long buried beneath the spore fields. We use them to cultivate the land and clear poisons from the air and water when spore storms began to disappear. The yoke wars. Once we discovered the power of the dragon yoke, our mech dark leaders wanted it for themselves. They reprogrammed the machines as weapons and commanded them to slay dragons and retrieve their eggs. While some gifted the mech arcs untold power, many eggs remained abandoned or broken. Oh. So dousers, which we'll be playing today, uh, there were those who rallied against this injustice, those who believed that rescuing eggs and raising their hatchlings would heal Palar and its communities once more. They were known as the dousers. All right. So... This is a solo journaling game, uh, as I mentioned, using the card system by Peach Garden Games, and we are playing the Desert. Uh, our aim for this whole uh, scenario is to locate the abandoned dragon eggs and bring them to a sanctuary. Um, in order for us to succeed, we have to make sure we expand our resources, rescue um, our little hatchlings um, so that they can be reared and change the kingdom forever. All right, so with the little starter exposition out of the way, we now break into some things that we need for our setup. Uh, of course, uh, the tone and safety of a game. Uh, this is meant to be an all ages game, so we will be pretty lighthearted here. Um, there will be challenging moments or perils, um, but we cannot die on our journey. So very lighthearted in that way. Uh, so the materials, which why don't we switch to my dual setup here so I can show you and explain what's going on. Woo! There we go. So you can see on the screen to my left as my hand phases through, um, we have our card setup. So I do not have the Dragon Dowser card deck. Um, what I'm seeing from the graphics, it is flippin' gorgeous. Um, Love it. If you want to check it for yourself, I know you can probably see stuff on their itch page. Um, so if you find Hatchling Games on itch, which, hey, they'll do a game jam later uh, as the Kickstarter is running. So make sure you look for that. Um, there's some really beautiful card art about the ace cards, which are ace cards are the dragon eggs. And we have four different kinds that we can pick. Um, but before I get ahead of myself, let me explain what we're seeing on the map here. So maybe for those who are familiar with Carta, we'll know um, but essentially, we have our play map here. We've doled out 23 cards, separating out our jokers that I put at either end here. Uh, the game engines to separate them as far as possible. So I put them at the corners. Um, we have a rows of four by six. So four down, six across. And we'll be searching for our egg, which you get to pick out which ace egg you want. So I picked uh, the heart, which is... Uh, represents water and spring and community. Um, and I'll read the little blurb about it in a moment. But we got our cards. Um, it does mention getting a six-sided die to represent your uh, 
Dowser, which I have here. I also have this really fun inspiration coin dragon thing, so I may just have it with that because I think it's fun. Um, also, I'm going to say I am playing the deck of cards I'm playing with is one I got from a game convention a while ago, long ass time ago, which is Legend of Zelda themed. So if my camera isn't even able to focus on it, it's Skull Kid. Um, so we'll have fun with that. I figured since Hatchling Games gets inspired by Legend of Zelda and the new game's coming out soon, why not? Let's play with the Zelda deck. All right, so we got our layout with the Jokers. They are our sanctuaries and we start at one. So I'm going to be right at this one in our bottom corner here. I have a pile of D4s just off scene a little bit here. Um, those are going to be my resources. So we start with 10. So let me pile them on the other side, my starting. So two, four. The text in the current copy of the game says eight, but I've been recommended to start with 10 as past testers stated they ran out of resources very quickly. So you can either start with 10 or 12. So two, four, six, eight, 10. I may do the 12. Let's do the 12. Nice and easy. There you go. And some more on the side for if we get more resources. All right. So we have our card deck, which is already laid out. We have our six die die uh, to represent our doser, which I have it with my coin here. Uh, our pool of tokens, which I have, and a journal or device to record the experience. You all are witnessing me recording my experience. All right. Um, and yeah, it says right here, the custom deck of cards seen throughout the pages, uh, which I'm seeing uh, can be purchased from our website at hatchlinggames.co.uk. So if you want to see the deck, highly check it out. Uh, I love the art for it. It looks so pretty um, just from the ace cards I'm seeing here as well as in the later images. So very much check that out. All right. So for our dousing, this is our next little blurb here. Uh, for our begin, we must pick one of four dousings. Um, the narrative you select will detect which dragon egg you must find. Each dousing represents a, to a card suit, an element, a season, and a theme. So as I mentioned, I picked uh, the heart, which I said was Water Spring Community. A little blurb here about it, um, as we also think about how we're going to RP all of this. Um, with its mother's last breath, the egg was dropped into the river, where it's traveled downstream, away from the hands of the Mechark soldiers. They gave chase along the riverbanks. The water seemed to caress the egg and rage up to soak its pursuers. Their armor grew heavy and their boots sank into the mud. Soon the egg was out of sight, along with any chance of promotion. So the egg that we are seeking uh, through the elements of water was able to outpace these soldiers that follow the orders of our ruler that we are rising up against. So this is the egg that we will have to find. Uh, followed by that little blurb. One of four blurbs that are possible. Uh, we It talks about um, our setup along with a nice example on the opposing page. So we already have this here. Just to explain it once again a little bit more. Uh, we pull, when you're setting out your map, you pull the two jokers. Um, as I mentioned, they are going to be our sanctuaries and starting points. So you want to have them off to the side so you can place them. Uh, you'll select your ace just to have that off to the side. Then you'll shuffle your remaining cards and dole out 23 of them. And with those 23 set out, you'll put the other set of cards aside. And then you'll shuffle in the ace uh, that you picked, your dowser, dousing that you picked. Shuffle it all up, which will give you 24 cards. Then you get your 4 by 6 grid. Um, and then once you have that grid, you set down your jokers. So there we go. Setup is perfect. So now we have our movement. So, the mechanics of the game is uh, with each turn, you move the dowser to an adjacent card in any direction. So, coming off my uh, joker, which would be this first card here, so we won't play that quite yet. Uh, each move across the spread expands a, or expends a resource. Cards can either give resources, expend them further, or ask for a d6 roll. So if you're wondering why you need a d6, well now we know. I'm still going to have the, the dragon coin out though. 
So, once you land on a face down card, oh wait, your first move from the sanctuary to the spread is free, so our first move will be free. Okay, awesome. Uh, once you land on a face down card, flip it over and follow the prompts to the corresponding entry in our rule book. Um, if the card was already face up, do not repeat the prompt. However, backtracking will ra waste resources, so we re recommend taking a linear route across the spread. So we're going to avoid backtracking to the best of our ability. Um, if you discover an ace other than the one we've selected, so if you find another dragon egg, uh, gain six resources. These eggs are discovered cracked and you must offer a blessing with burying the fragments. So that is a mechanic that we could possibly do later. If your resources run dry, you have abandoned your search for the egg. Once the ace is revealed with plus six resources, retrace your steps back to the sanctuary for success. All right. So with that, um, it does talk about more about how you do your journaling. Um, so each card will have uh, two journaling prompts. Use these prompts to expand our lore and setting of the Dragon Dowser. And yeah, so there we go. Um, there's also more about the prompts here. As I'm looking over my screen, let me bring this in front of me so I'm not looking off to the side here. Um, so all prompts will have mechanical effects on our resources. And uh, try to keep the prompts open, open as possible. So we'll have lots of creative uh, improv and writing that we can do into this to make a, a spirit unique to us. Um, Resources can represent anything, so we can come up with whatever resources that we are obtaining or losing. Um, and then the blessings, only the ace you choose at the start is guaranteed to appear on the spread. However, we discover alternate ace. Um, it is found uh, broken with its contents destroyed. Though it is a sad discovery, our dowser can offer a blessing for the departed dragon in whatever manner the player sees fit. This can take the form of a burial, an eulogy, some form of ritual or any other ceremony, so we can decide how that goes. Uh, so saving our egg. As we return to the sanctuary, we've completed our task. But if we want, you can add one final journal entry. So we can do a nice little epilogue at the end to wrap everything up, explain how we bonded with our dragon as they grew and the training and all that fun stuff. So we'll See what happens when we get there. And yeah, it does mention the alternate play if you feel resources are too limited uh, or you want to play without challenging, you can begin with 10 or 12 resources, which is what we're doing. It got, it got recommended to me. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do that play. All right. So. First and foremost, let's take a breath. Let's have some hydration. And let us get into the mindset of being a dragon dowser. We are a rebel standing up to the tyranny of our ruler who has taken advantage and abused this resource that has come to us from the dragons. And as a dragon dowser, I feel it is my duty to try and recover as many eggs as I can uh, to seek out any of them lingering out there in the wilds of the greater world and help raise them into dragons um, to help maintain this balance that we've had and worked so hard to obtain. My name is Harith. And I am a fairly young dowser. I'm about 22 years old. Uh... Heavily freckled uh, from days out in the sun. Uh, and skin tanned and burnt from all that labor. Uh, wandering the world and trying to find signs of any hatched eggs or even unhatched eggs that I can recover. It is a slog. But I know with other rebels out there and our goals that we wish to achieve to maintain 
the balance that we've had. I am prepared to do whatever I can and expend whatever resources I must to find dragon eggs and bring them all back to the sanctuary so that we may get hatchlings and raise them and train them and have that peace once more. Maybe even bring down the tyranny that has brought this destruction upon our friends. So let's turn over our first card. <gasps> Which is a king of hearts. Zora on the card. So that is a freebie. So let us see. Yeah. So. Ooh. This is something positive. <laughs> I... Like I said, I am very much a wanderer of the world, as many of us are trying to find these dragon eggs. And I wander through ravaged lands. And as I walk, paying more attention to the horizon beyond, I didn't notice the sudden drop of a cliff in front of me when I take a tumble down and as I roll the world a blur in my eyes I hit and land onto something soft and hear a yelp <laughs> as I shake my head from the tumble and blink away the blurriness I see a snout of a male spring dragon looking down at me across its nose. And I sort of blink as it makes a gruff huff at me. And I see around me a rather dilapidated settlement. Uh, there are some people here uh, who are sort of ducked down and away at the sound of my landing and this dragon is just staring me down I sort of very cautiously at least get up into a kneeling position hands up as I bring up my dousing crystal and the dragon blinks as a person just off behind some rebel says, Is, is that a dowsing crystal? Are you a dowser? And and still up, I nod and say, That I am. That I am. Ah, uh, didn't mean to startle anybody. I wasn't watching my footing. Um... And I slowly rise up as the dragon pulls their head back and gives a nod of acknowledgement. And... I sit for a little bit as the villagers come up and I ask them about what had happened and they mentioned um, that they had come from other areas, but their settlements were completely wrecked by soldiers of the ruler who were looking for dragon eggs. And they had heard about a dragon being in the area, uh, gesturing to the male spring dragon, uh, but Obviously, we didn't have any eggs, but now we are trying to just reclaim a little settlement for ourselves. And this dragon's offered to protect us as we restore ourselves and reclaim 
anything of the future. Can I nod? I think, well, it's possible I could stay for a bit and help you all. It's important to help our fellow dragons and work with them. And if you all find yourselves in distress, well, then I can be here and help you in your efforts. And the crowd kind of excitedly murmurs amongst themselves, excited to have a dragon dowser in their midst. Uh, those seemingly more leadership positions come up and thank me um, for wanting to help them and to join them. And uh, together with me and the dragon, uh, protecting them, they'll be able to build their settlement upon this area and we can get out of here without worry. So, with weeks going by, we see the settlement built. Um, from whatever reclaimed wood of the area, cloth, whatever materials they can come by, creating homely sort of homes, <laughs> uh, houses and buildings that they can use. Nothing fancy, but livable. Something they can get a start on until a better area to settle in could be found as as they work upon the back of this dragon. So with that, if I am reading this correctly, we get a bonus resources. We get plus five. I have exactly five over here. <laughs> I may have to get more if we do really well. <laughs> All right. So let us let us go north. So we land on another heart card. Eight. So. <laughs> so. I am, after some weeks, the settlement having been built up and the dragon ready to fly off uh, to help carry these folks with him, I am wandering out into the spore field, my mask up, protecting my face and my no nose and lungs and all the fun stuff. And while I'm walking out there, I come across other dousers. I just see the flickering light in the distance and as the sun is setting and as I get closer, I see that there are other people. And they look to me as one was scouting out, thinking I was part of them before realizing I was a stranger to them. But they notice the glow of my dousing crystal just lightly around my neck and they wave me down before introducing themselves as other fellow dowsers. So around the campfire we sit and we talk about the discoveries we've come across, the other settlements and peoples we've helped, the ways we've disrupted the workings of the soldiers under the command of the ruler. And with shared drinks and food, we laugh about the good things and the silly things. And we console each other about the hardships, but the found shattered eggs with no more life to them, but the different burials and honorifics that we offer little hatchlings that would never see the light of day. 
but we honor them and we drink and we tell more stories, we sing songs, and we celebrate in the revelry of defending our world and rising up against the tyranny that dare try and disrupt everything in the name of greed and power. So we get to roll a d6. Ooh. And I get four more resources. So now I gotta pull up my little bag of dice. I thought I pulled out enough, but... <laughs> Alright. I got so many, so many things in my bag of dice. But I do have enough of a dice collection to continue using d4s. Uh, so I said four. One, two, three, four. There you go. So my pack is becoming quite full. I have lots of rations um, and other dried goods and foods and like sort of very nut mixes uh, with the camp here. Able to get things like extra water skin uh, in case some of the longer stretches of open spore field or more harsher, drier weather makes it hard to obtain water. Um, they give me another set of fresh clothes, so uh, especially socks. You always want more socks in case you go through any uh, rivers or bogs or marshes and you need to change out to keep your feet dry. So lots of lots given to help maintain my journey. And by morning, as we wrap up breakfast and the camp starts un raveling uh, everyone getting ready to go on their way. We wish each other well with our usual greetings and give wishes that our journey to recover the next egg is fruitous and we will see each other again in the sanctuary. So I know this is the Triforce on this stack, but this is the clubs. Triforce is clubs. Which is a six. Oof. And speaking of wet feet and having socks, just in case. I come across a swamp. And there is a machine there that is meant to help people cross on through. So, of course, I hitch a ride. But as I am there on this machine, and it's sort of built up to look kind of like... Hmm, what's the right word for this? It has... About six legs on either side, and they sort of move in a fluid kind of wave of emotion. Not quite parallel to each other, but almost like a centipede in how they move. And it has a core central unit that is hollowed out to allow you stand and sit in the space, and the front has the controls to maneuver. So as I am riding this machine that is guiding me through the swamps, you can hear the bubbling in the waters, uh, just barely over the mushing of each of this machine's leg as it's propelling forward across the scape. And then we hear one of the legs make almost a snapping sound as a sudden jolt of being brought to the side as we get dragged into the murk by some sort of mutated creature. And as I take a better look, I see it has initially what I thought to be a crocodile-like head or maybe an alligator. I'm not too sure, but 
it has those raised eyes to the side that are bright yellow and a long snout, but as it rises up with its head just maw around the leg of the machine, I see that has much denser bottom jaw and a sort of bulbous-like front on its neck, like almost like when a frog ribbits. There is some frills along the side of it, layers of frills, and awkwardly molded legs, dense like tree stumps, with very elongated claws, sort of dug into the muck as it drags the machine. The machine is a much more interesting target with its movement. So quickly, to make sure it isn't attracted to me, I roll out to the side, swinging a sort of hook on a rope, like some sort of grappling uh, tool, and I sling it up into the trees. And once I feel it get snug, I grab the rope and I swing off the machine, crawling my way up into the canopy. I sit there for a little bit, watching the machine get dragged down, the legs getting snapped off as this massive creature is tearing it apart, snorting and rolling in the murk and mud. I watch as it seems to sniff around and nudging into the seating sort of cockpit area of the machine before with a massive 10 foot long tail, it jostles the machine to the side. And it starts to wade itself through the swamp once more. I sit up in the tree for a while, worrying about if I climb down too soon, it would be attracted to the noise. And once enough time passes. I very gingerly make my way in the direction I intended to go, climbing down the trees and staying close to their bases in case I have to climb her up again. So we lose a resource. And we continue on. <gasps> Ganon Dwarf. I wonder what that brings. Let's go. Ah. So, the seasons have begun to change. The warmth of summer seeping in, the sun now up, and the days long. And on, on a day that I've come into a wood, trying to find a place to rest, I stumble upon a cave. And in the cave, I find a male summer dragon. Scales of brilliant hues of reds and golds. And at first he tried to snip at me, but then very quickly realized that I was a doser. Uh, he mentioned that his lair was feeling not as fortified as he hoped. Uh, th there could be more done, and he is trying his best to build up the walls. So I offer to help him. I take time building up defenses, trying to hide the opening of the cave to make it a little more concealed. And I try making sure that the, any areas that people might be able to dig into, if they have any of the digger type machines, become a problem using large stones to be put in the way. Um, anything that could get torn up that could break the machinery. Um, and just making sure any signs that 
could be an area for a dragon is covered up. But we do take time, at least at the noon point of the day, to always sit out and stretch and just enjoy that warm sun. Ah. And make sure we hydrate because it's a lot of work. <laughs> so we get another five. Oh my goodness. The amount of resources I have coming on my journey. Well, one, two, three, four, five. The red dragon was so grateful he was able to, or not red dragon, <laughs> summer dragon was so grateful. Uh, he gave me plenty of knowledge about the local uh, foraging items and uh, such as specific fungi that I can utilize for food, the berries, what to look for. If two berries seem like they look alike, here's the signs of knowing which one was poisonous, uh, which came down to the leaves. And be careful with some of the roots. <laughs> so he dispersed a lot of knowledge for helping them fortify their lair. So that is a spade. It's like swords, but it's a spade. <laughs> Eight. Oh. So part of a dowser's mission is searching every nook and cranny of the world to try and find any sign of eggs that could have been abandoned or hidden from those that seek to utilize the yolks without care for the young that is growing within. On one such nook searching adventure, I found myself in an abandoned machine workshop deep in the earth. And I have go through trying to scavenge any resources that could be here. I see metallic parts and gears, uh, odd copper wires and etchings on parchments of paper that seem like they would crumble apart if you so much touched them. And as I search around this workshop, I take note that whatever was being done here, it seemed like it may have been maybe a research facility. Maybe a testing area to figure out how to build the machines, how they work. I'm not a machined minded individual. I know that with the connection with the dragons, we're able to power them. But beyond that, I'm not sure. But from my resource gathering here from what I'm observing of this space. It does seem like it was sort of a construction testing ground of these machines. Now we get to see how many resources I get. I get three. I was supposed to expend. So hold on. Expended one for that. Expended one for that one. Expended one for that one. Expended one for that one. I wasn't expending my resources. Silly me. But I get three of these back. Huzzah. So, going over some of the old materials. Most of it either rotten away from the age of and going over time. But there is leathers that I could always utilize for patching up my own armor. Um, any of my leathered materials, uh, some wires or string like things I could always utilize, maybe. Um, but I get what I can make note of the space and where it is in the landscape, because it could be a good place to rest or return to for a safe haven if I ever have to outrun soldiers. 
and I continue on. So put resource. Aha! Eight of clubs. So as I'm wandering out in the world, I see just on through the hills and valleys, just very slightly sticking up in the gla or grass, a glint of metal, something shining. And I wander on over and I see that there's just this hunk of some sort of machine, mostly buried in the earth, but it's there. And as I observe it and maneuver around it and start digging around its edges, there is some functional parts here. Uh, though it is open to the weathering of the world, uh, within its metallic carapace, there is some functioning parts from this otherwise seemingly broken machine. And what I can tell as I am gathering uh, some metals and gears and other components I could use later to repair other, at least functioning, to an extent, machines. I s this seems like it might have been one of the wandering guards. It has those longer limbs and those sort of sensor eye things on its outer shell. And what I've seen of them, they tend to just kind of wander walls or the outskirts of civilizations uh, as protectors in a way. So I pull what I can off of it and Ooh, what would I create with these parts? I have so much I could utilize. I could create maybe a shield. Or I could create a weapon. I might have enough to do both. Or I can create some armor parts for myself. Well, I take time to sit down and sketch. As I get... Buy more resources. I should have gone the hard route. I'm oh no, am I out of D4s in yet? Oh I need one more. In here somewhere. If not, nope. Let me grab from some characters that I play. <laughs> there we go. I get five more. <laughs> I got so much in my pile off to the side here. Um But yeah, so I incorporate some metal into my armaments. Um, that way, if anything were to shoot at me, uh, at least I have some protection. Um, I create a weapon, sort of fortifying my sh uh, own blade so that it's a little stronger. And yeah, that takes, that takes me some time. Let's go... And a resource for moving. So, six of diamonds. Hmm. Ah. <sighs> the last week has been weird, and I didn't notice it at first. But as I go and eat from my pack, I realize, hmm, something's missing. And then pulling everything out, counting out my rations, I realize the number is off. Based on how much I've eaten, there should have been more here. I know how much I packed, I know how much was given, and I've counted it out. 
I count it out all the time to make sure my resources are good. Hmm. Something or someone is stealing my rations off of me. All right. Well, while I set up camp, I make a plan to try and catch whomever or whatever could be stealing from my pack. So I make sure I am hyped up on caffeine so I don't sleep. I make sure the campfire doesn't burn too bright. And I put a pack down and I make, set up sort of a snare around it. Something easy to pull. As I pretend to sleep, I keep a very subtle eye, just the one closest to the earth, partially open, just waiting for any sort of shadow to cross over my bag. And as I lie there for a few hours, thinking maybe, I'm imagining it, maybe Rations may have got misplaced. I do see a shadow cross and I immediately cut my line and it zips up as I hear a yelp and the shadow flying up into the canopy by its ankle. As I say, ha ha, and jump up, bringing up a torch to light the area. I see, struggling and whining, a little fox-like creature. It has a uh, sort of grayish fur with a layer of green, almost moss-like uh, material on its back. It has very, very, very large ears and paws with posable thumbs on the front. So it's able to sort of grapple with its paws and a very long, uh, sleek tail, but it is flailing about yelping and yipping, um, as it looks down at me with its big, big, dark, kind of blackish green eyes. <sighs> and I sort of sigh, can't really blame nature for wanting stuff, especially if I make it easy to steal from. So I make sure I pull my pack up onto me and I very gently let down the fox creature and can't really get close to it to <laughs> get the rope off its leg. Uh, so I try my best to sort of shake it off to try and loosen the threads of the rope um, so that it may be able to get the rest of it off its angle later, um, which it quickly gets up and darts off into the brush. So little fox creature stealing from me. I now double up the protection around my rations uh, using those other scraps. I make an additional bag to have in my bag. <laughs> Five. A spit. So going through the woods, I'm following this river that sort of opens up into a bigger, wider space of it. And at some point I realize I'm going to have to make a crossing. And every time I think the next one will be safer, it doesn't seem that much safer. So I come across at least a part that has some rocks standing up so I can try and stick to there. 
and that the water doesn't seem too, too shallow. And I attempt to make the crossing. I jump from to the first rock, steady my balance. I jump to the next rock and again, a bit wavered, but still on it. And then I jump for the third. And as my first foot makes that landing, I can feel it give and slip. Myself skidding up and hitting the water. It is freezing. And the moment I get submerged, it is dark. I come up and quickly swim myself to the other side, getting onto the shore. My body is shaking, chilled right through. And I know I need to find myself some shelter and create a fire to get myself warm. I immediately, through full body shakes, wade through the underbrush and I find a little clearing spot. I very quickly, as I feel my head get fuzzy and just heat radiating like I'm cold and hot at the same time, I feel my forehead and there is a fever developing and quickly. Nature here is interesting. And yes, so much as being submerged in the wrong kind of water can make you quite sick. So very quickly, I set up that fire. I exchange my clothes. Thank God those other dousers gave me some fresh clothes. And... Uh, I go through my pack, going over the herbs and plants that I can use to minimize fevers and chills. Uh, any remedies from using some root ground up with some orris, red petals, and berry. It creates enough antioxidants and a warming effect from the inside. So I just sort of mesh together a quick concoction and consume it. It does not taste great, but at least it will help resolve the fever to a point that it's manageable. <laughs> It does take me some time to recover. I feel like I get stuck there for maybe a couple days. I'm not too sure. It was hard to measure time under the fever, even with it somewhat managed. But I wasn't well enough to keep moving in case worse things happen. Ooh! We got an ace so this is a dragon egg but it is not the one i selected so first let me expend the resource to get that so that is a club spade so Towards the end of summer, I come across an egg. Though broken, it has a black, almost charcoal-like shell. And the interior of the shell is sort of a burning gold coloration. I sort of pick up the fragments, pulling them over in my hands, sighing at the idea that could I have found this egg sooner? Could I have recovered whatever life was here? But it is broken. 
and whatever was inside is long gone. I build up a fire and place the fragments within it, seeing them glisten almost in the blaze, the fire becoming more golden and sparkling against the shell. And I kneel before it, down on both knees. Softly singing a song in a whisper of my breath. And once the flames die down, I, with the earth still hot, pushing earth over the fragments, burying them with the ashes of the fire. I press a hand onto the earth, deep and hard, and give a blessing for this departed dragon. Holding on to my dosing crystal. And I spend the next night here watching over this very small and humble ceremonial mound. With each hour coming back and piling up more earth. Until by break of dawn, there is a rather large mount with stones placed in sort of a spiral configuration. And I take out a seed and place it buried onto the very top. We've lost the life that was in this egg. But with its shell and broken ashes may it offer at least nature a chance to thrive. So just to confirm the mechanic, I believe I get six resources when we find an egg. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I don't know if I where I read that. I swore I read that. <laughs> that wasn't there. Where did I read this? Yeah, I gained six resources. Was in movement. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, exactly six in our discard pile. Boop. Right. So with our blessings and ceremony given to this egg, we move on. Let's go this way now. Spade for spades. So, I thought I had claimed a safe spot for me to camp in the night, but maybe with the recent discovery of the egg, it made it difficult to see the signs of much worse things around me.
as I am resting, I hear the sudden cracks of twigs. When I sit up, there is just this pack of ragining mutants that descend upon my little camp. They tear up my tent and sort of just open-ended lean. Uh, the fire gets scattered and I find myself having to get up and defend what I can before they run off with my stuff. So with my blade brought up, I immediately start swinging at them. Not so much as to kill, but to scare them off. Whacking them with the butt of my blade to send them pretty much into the dirt in pain. And they do get a few good strikes and hits at me. These creatures. And there's a mix. Some have, you know, there's elongated limbs, kind of scrappy. Uh, more pig-like snouts. Others... Uh, big-eared, big-eyed, wide mouths, and sort of more uh, pot bellies on them. But each one trying to grab what they can and run off. And so in turn, I try and grab what I can out of their hands and kick them. <laughs> Doesn't work too well, though, as by the time our scuffle ends with every strike and blow I deliver, they scatter off and I go through my count of my supplies and found that seems enough of my rations are gone. Some of my metals and cogs I collected are gone. Three rations. Uh, or not rations, but resources. Right. Ooh, another four. This time clubs. <sighs> so what I'm noting as like a mechanical thing is seven and below is bad. Eight and above is good. <laughs> That's what I'm observing in these props. <sighs> As I go wandering through the valleys and across the spore fields, I see just off in the distance trails of smoke entering the sky of course that immediately worries me so i begin making very rushed movement in the direction and as i come up i see what is the aftermath of soldiers of the mechark soldiers having destroyed a workshop dedicated to restoring architect or agricultural machines. Machines that could help till fields and water plants and just maintain the lands to grow food. But why? The people that were here and operating this workshop tell me that they came in toppling over any metalworks into the forges so they just melt down and become unusable. Um, they set ablaze any wooden structures, any hay. They salt down the earths and throw salted waters onto the already built machines and with bludgeoning weapons break down any machine limbs or collection mechanical parts rendering them completely useless for the job that they were intended for it is 
deeply unfortunate. As this workshop could have done so much to provide for the people of the lands and the but instead, the Mech Ark decided that it just took too much resources from them, I suppose. So I stay and do what I can to help recover, though many of the materials are already either stolen or fused and melted down into unusable product or just rested and unable to obtain anything from. So I try and expend what I can, but it seems it's just not quite enough. This is card. King of spades. All right. So after spending some weeks tending to the workshop to try and reclaim it, trying to re-up the hopes of the people here, it does come a time where I move on. And I progress forward the early signs of winter starting to seep in. I'm heading towards the mountains. Maybe not the best time to go to the mountains in the winter. But it could also be a good time to go without being disturbed by people or mech soldiers. And as I come to the foot of the hills, I see a winter dragon. Uh, he is sort of deep cerulean blue on the underneath, but the tops of his scales are frosted as though he's getting sort of a winter coloration coming in. And he turns at the sound of my walking forward. And as he's about to make a growl out me, he rises up and gives me a look of recognition. And I sort of blink with a cocked head and I realize that I've helped this winter dragon in the past. He was a lot smaller then. Uh, probably just a little bit bigger than I am. Uh, his scales were a much softer gray blue back then, instead of the more pure cerulean now with the white coming on, sort of like a silvering lining on him. Uh, he was being chased by a couple of Mechark soldiers then. And I had sent some slings out, knocking the soldiers down to the ground as they got roped up at their ankles. I whistled for the dragon to come to me as I then follow up with just a toss of a net and it just lying on top of the two soldiers where they're now fighting against it, trying to get themselves back up, having to cut against the density of it before realizing that it wasn't just a typical rope netting, but one enforced with a uh, little met like metal metallic threading all through it to make it even harder to break through. So we made our escape. I forgot to expend a resource. Uh, we made our escape out and I helped the dragon. He was a little bit injured, so I made sure to bring him to the sanctuary to help heal them and look after them until they were ready to go back out into the world. So he gives me a nuzzle and offers to fly me over the mountains a range that is basically impossible to pass without a means of flight. So I take seat upon his front haunches, right where the wings spread out from. 
and with a strong, mighty lift, he pounds his wings down and sends himself up into the sky. And at first, I'm leaning forward and grappling onto him, feeling that sudden rush before the momentum becomes smooth and familiar. And he flaps very gently almost catching a glide on the wind instead of having to force to keep himself in the air. It is so cold and crisp, but the thrill of being up. And definitely a good time to realize that I do not have a fear of height as I look around and see that clear horizon, the curvature of the world. The soft crackling of storms off in the distance, signs of civilizations, and peering down and seeing the forest disappear under cloud. As he brings me over and landing, he offers me some information about the area, the kind of foliage I can find, the sort of activity that has been going on from his aerial view and where I could find his own cave if I ever need to seek a shelter or respite he'd be more than happy to bring me in I thank him for his flight and offering but I do have to continue my way in hopes of finding more eggs And so, as we continue on, where's the page? There it is. Maybe it's only a day later. Not too far out of the mountains. I stumble across a small open grove, and as I come into it, I see that there is a natural spring. And at first, if I didn't just walk into the space, I would have no idea this existed here. But here I see this clear, almost mirror-like surface of this spring, and stones standing around with carvings all in them. I walk up and I study the stones and I see just different carvings of dragons, different kinds of the season in different positions. In a way, they almost seem to be telling a story of each one. And I come to the surface and I see my face peering up at me. I put a hand in the ripples breaking that mirror and scoop up the water and take a sip. And this is very rare fresh water. It is clean. It is crisp. It is so good. And I just scoop both hands, just shoveling the water up to my face, trying to drip it down my throat. It is so refreshing and so hydrating. Ah. Oh. Immediately, I go off to the edge of the grove, dumping out the old water in my canteens and return to the water and fill it up. Oh, fresh water isn't having to be purified or filtered. It's just so good. I need another D4. Oh wait, did I expend? No, I did not. No, no, I did not. So there. And then... Uh... Yes, we get one back. Okay. Maybe <laughs> my mad. I don't know why my brain hiccuped there. Um, but I filled my cantina. 
and I take some time just off to the side, pulling up fresh water and washing myself down, washing up my clothes, getting all the past, like the swamps and the spore fields, just all of it out of my clothes. And by the time it's all dry, it feels so clean. It's amazing how a shower and clean clothes from spring water can feel so good. <sighs> but being that clean doesn't maintain when you travel out and find yourselves having to deal with the spore storm. Now, to be fair, all nature has its own beauty. In any sort of disaster, there's an element of eerie beauty to it. And the spore storms do have this, even in the depths of darkness. So as I travel out into the spore fields, I am with a group of merchants and we begin to look seeking shelter as we see the storm encroaching. As our shelter is set up and everything's alight, the generator the merchants has fails. And we are left in pure darkness. Merchants are murmuring, kind of scared as the thickness of the spore storm comes over. And we swear we see movements of shadows on the edges and shifting of the earth. Um, I try my best to distract everyone with tales that I've heard about managing against the spore storms, about how keeping your mind busy, focusing on tasks, like counting your resources, counting your rations, refixing ropes, repacking your packs. So we do what we can, but it is a restless night. I lose two resources. Ah. That is clubs. So leaving in a sort of disbursement from the merchants as we get through the storm and get through the fields, I come across a community and it seems due to their placement against uh, some open hills that they have experienced a landslide that covers up their streets and houses. And unfortunately also buried a machine that <laughs> could help dig out the people. Um, so I come in and uh, they asked me for their help to look over the machine and see if I knew anything that could help it as we are working towards uh, extracting it from the earth. And we unbury it. It takes some hours, but we do get it unburied and move it out of the earth and pull it to a clear space. And with looking over it, it seems one of the limbs got dislocated and with that dislocation one of the sharper edges severed the lines that went into the limb. Ugh. And unfortunately that's the limb that helps it do its digging as it sort of motions its limbs forward to pull out dirt so without that limbed arm can't really do that anymore. Ugh. And as we observe it more, I realize that a lot of the earth also got into the recesses and the openings of this machine. 
and we try our best to sh shake it all out, but the mud is caked in there. And sort of just shake my head. Seems have to dig out the manual way. As frustrating as that can be. I keep forgetting my resource used for moving forward. There we go. And they sort of m mutter and grumble and huff. But not much more can be done when the machine is wrecked. <laughs> I stay for the night uh, and leave as early as I can come the sunrise. Tennis space. So upon the morning, I leave and come back through wandering the woods, going across rivers and ravines. And I come across a stray wolf cub, sort of whimpering. Uh, trying to hide in the bush. But it was still easy enough to find, so I coax it out with some food. I think maybe I can at least bring it back to the sanctuary to help it. To raise along with the other hatchlings. Maybe it could become... a friend. So with it... Coming up, taking what rations I have for my hands, I pick up the cub. And I make my way back to the sanctuary. And over the course of the few months, I raise it, taking care of it. I'm keeping memory though, of the fact that this is a wild creature. But it greets me with licks and wagging tails and jumping until it starts getting a little too big that it hard to stand up against as he puts his giant paws on my shoulders to lick my face. I call him Merrick. And watching him play with the little dragon hatchlings is always fun until he got too big for the young ones. But still at a size that the larger ones can continue playing with him. His sort of hatchling mates, litter mates, as so to speak. But he does spend some time caring for the younger hatchlings to give them licks <laughs> uh, in the ways that a wolf cares for young. But now Merrick is with me. And with his senses, his snout and his hearing, he could watch my back as I did his. And maybe he can seek out eggs better than I can. Game. See resources and have a wolf friend. Seven of clubs. So I come down a stretch of road on a new wandering adventure. And as I come into a settlement, I'm hearing a lot of people panic as I'm seeing logs being tossed around by a machine, a multi-limbed sort of circular kind of machine once used to help build, uh, well, buildings and homes and structures. But it is seems to be malfunctioning. I'm seeing little sparks light up within it and at its joints as it's rigidly pausing before jerking and then picking up something, spinning and then tossing it 
or jamming a log into the ground, just going out of its programming. As everyone's panicking, trying to think of how to shut it down, I rush in and with a blade, I know how to at least hit points to ground it without destroying it. So I struck or strike at pinpoints in its limbs and its sockets. And as it spins, it's one mechanical surveying eye towards me. I give it a hard strike on the top and it buzzes as there's a loud mechanical whine and it collapses. A lot of the local buildings have quite an amount of damage. I forgot to spend the resource. And I never, oh, six. And I find that I spend a good amount of weeks helping them rebuild those buildings and recover the machine. And it takes a lot. Basically, all of the scraps that I've recovered over time, I give up to help recover this machine. And we do eventually get it in working order, though we have decided to maintain it to just placing the foundations for now. And keeping only one of its limbs active for that. Until it proves that is in full functioning order. Right. Let's go up one. Ooh, Joker. Or not Joker. Um, Jack. Yes. And that is spades. Uh, resource to get there. <laughs> Gotta remember that. Bad. So as I'm passing through an abandoned settlement, I see... Not see. I hear it first. The cries. It is of a dragon. And immediately... I start dashing in the direction, unhampered by any thought of what else could possibly be around. And as I dash around, looking between ruined buildings and large stones, I see it. A young winter dragon. It seemed to have caught itself underneath a machine. Its wing just caught underneath it as though it may have fallen on it. As I approach and I ask what happened, it does relay that it was scavenging around and got curious as this machine was standing tall and unmoving, unactive or inactive. But as it approached and gave it a touch, it toppled over and before the dragon could completely pull itself away, its wing got caught under the weight. Okay. So immediately... I create a sort of levee system with some ropes and some of the other debris around. And with the dragon, I bring the rope over. We sort of start leveling together, lifting the machine enough that's able to pull back. And unfortunately, because of the weight, it did harm the dragon's wing. So with what resources I have, I create a splint for it to help Keep it solid until it fully heals. And I stay with the dragon. And now that we have a moment to rest and get acquainted, this young dragon is a winter dragon. Um, but unlike my older friend, it has a sort of frosted pine green look to it. As though it is... Um, an evergreen that got snowed or frosted over. It has a darker green on the underneath of its wings. And sort of little 
points on its scales around its elbows, knees, and uh, sort of on the edges of its uh, paws or hands, almost creating into little points of uh, quills like a pine needle. And their eyes are a very soft, soft green. And sort of like its horns. Very long and very thinned out as they get there. But he's still young, so it makes me wonder how much longer those horns will get. And he's a very lengthy dragon too, very spindly. Having held him, and upon his wing getting better, he takes me around to show me his scavenging spots and the things that he's found. And then we work together on dismantling uh, the machine that he was trapped under to recover some parts, as it seems like it was an active and maybe whatever part of it made it permanent as no one else recovered the machine so we just took what parts I could utilize out of it for any future machine that I could fix with them so I get three resources yay so we spend the time until the dragon's healed <gasps> and then I move on my way to my next card which is my egg this is the egg that I selected, the heart, as I said at the start. Look, I love I, this fun deck. <laughs> All right, so what does it mean when we find our egg? I suppose, where do we find an egg? I am... At the foots of the mountains, following a riverbank, when I'm just about to wade through the water. And for a moment, I thought I'd catch something like a glint, very, very subtle amongst the pebbles and stone underneath the moving, rushing of the water. And there I see what I thought was just a rather large rock or pebble, but it seems too, too perfectly shaped. So I reached down for it. And I see my dousing crystal glow brighter as I get closer. And I pause as I pull off the necklace and bring it forward. And I see the stone moving away from me and towards, like the crystal, towards that seemingly pebbled stone. And I feel my heart kind of catch in my throat. It's been so long since I found another dragon egg. Did I just seemingly come across one? So I reach down and pull up the stone, seemingly stone. And as I do, I can see now more clearly, almost like an oversized robin egg, a deep kind of like a pale powdery blue, but it has some browning at the bottom, sort of like it was dip dyed in mud or something. And I pull it up and the crystal is glowing bright against it. I, I found an egg. I found an egg. I got to get back to the sanctuary as fast as possible. And I need to protect it until then. There is a sanctuary nearby. So, we just need to get there 
with enough resources. I can do this. I can do this. I get up to the shore. I wrap up the egg in my beddings that I carry with me, the little bedroll. And I place it in my bag and make sure it is safe and warm. Okay. <laughs> okay, we can do this. <sighs> Come on, Harith. We can do this. We can do this. And Merrick is kind of excitedly whimpering off on the side as I wave him down. He's like, Merrick, come on. We we're, we got we got to go back. And the wolf excitedly crosses the river to me. And we are going to go back to the sanctuary. Now our beginning sanctuary is very very far. Which we also get plus six for finding an ace, so one, two, three, four. Oh, I grabbed enough. We will retrace. So one, two, three. <laughs> Yay, we did it! So, in a massive rush of endurance and adrenaline, at the fastest pace I can muster, I move through the landscapes heading back to the sanctuary to put this egg in a safety of a new home where it can ra be hatched and be raised and be trained and learn how to defend itself against this cruel world that the ruler has made for us. I remember the day that it hatched. I felt like I couldn't leave its side at all. The cracks came very gently before the sudden burst as a head poked out. Pale blue like the shell it was, but spatterings like freckles of brown on it. And just the little stubs of beginning horns. They were adorable. So with Merrick by my side and the other dousers that come and go from the sanctuary. We raise this new hatchling. He learns very quickly how to fly, which became a little menace while I was young. It's blue, becoming deeper and gaining sort of a red crest of color on its chest, looking almost like a blue bird, but as a dragon. and just deep brown sort of spots along it, getting solid at the tips of its tail and wings. And we bond, we take our time, disrupting soldier movements, helping settlements, recovering machinery to use for our own gains. I teach them about what is going on to help prepare them for when they can be free and be out from the sanctuary. There's a lot of work to end the tyranny, but as we help more dragons find more eggs, go hatchlings and Rear them to their adulthood. We're getting better chances as with every passing day. And that's it. We did it. We found our egg. We have a lot of resources. Let me count how many resources I had. Two, 
four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. I got nineteen plus. So I did really well if I played this correctly. <laughs> um, I mean, granted, in our path, like I said, I observed from the prompts that. Eight and above is positive entry or positive and seven and below is negative. So positive, we get more resources, negative, we lose it. So we've had far more positive. We had a burial along our way, um, but these kings, we got we got three kings, <laughs> which gives us a lot of resources. The eggs give us a lot of resources. Um, so let me see what the other cards were. So that was would have been a good positive, good positive, good positive. Good positive, good positive. So we had more positives than negatives on my map. So we got very lucky um, with a very big cluster that we didn't even get to. So that was Dragon Dowser, at least my playthrough of it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I hope it made you curious so you can play it yourself when you support the Kickstarter that is happening May 25th. Uh, it was dropped here in chat, so let me do the command code again. That's Dowser, uh, which brings up the direct link to the Kickstarter page that you can sign up to right now. Or if you're watching this post stream down the line, you know, still check out the Kickstarter uh, for support or to see where else you can get this game. As um, honestly, it is very, very pretty. I love the look of this. You can get your hands on the cards. Cards are pretty. The D6 for your dowser is pretty. Uh, and yeah, I, I the layout of everything is very clean, very crisp. Uh, <laughs> been saying crisp a lot tonight, clean and crisp. Um, so made it very easy to read. So very grateful for that. Um, the artwork is delightful. Um, highly suggest because I see the artwork for the cards in uh, this copy. Uh, so highly suggest to get those if you can. Um, gosh. And the one thing I didn't say was that there is an example of play at the end um, if you're still sort of confused on how to operate uh, the system. Uh, once again, it uses the Carta system. Uh, so if you want to play more Carta system or more games like this using Carta, you can. Um, and yeah, and after supporting the Kickstarter, uh, make sure you be on the lookout for the game jam that's happening. Uh, Hashland Games has said that they will be doing a game jam in relation to Dragon Dowser, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. That will be happening on itch, uh, which also follow them on itch if you have not, um, for additional games that they produce and design and throw out there into the world. Uh, I believe a sort of cryptid themed one is out or is coming out as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, so massive uh, thank you to uh, Hatchling Games for uh, providing a reviewer copy for me to play here on stream today. I am just adjusting you guys because I seem low on the camera. Um, and for providing things, there was one of the musics uh, was provided that I played in the beginning for our intro scene. Um, they also provided our other scene, which I'm going to switch to right now, now that we're done looking at my side here. So this scene was also provided, so thank you for that. Um, also, uh, also what? That's it. So once again, check out Hatchling Games for more. If you want to support, uh, anything else, there is more options to this game too. So even though I played one of the dousing options, uh, there's other stories you can tell. So tell your own story of your own dowser maybe it'll help you in your own uh lore building for your own games for your group games uh that's one of the reasons why i also like playing solo as someone who develops world building and working towards lore for my group games like any D, &D or whatever other games i play i find they can really help spark information so for this this maybe you have a dragon you want to develop a story for or lore about and you know even though your world isn't this world of Dragon Dose, or maybe you could use what you've made out of this story for your own more stuff. Um, so there you go. I hope you had a great time with me today, ob observing and seeing how this game plays. 
Uh, and yes, again, highly recommend checking it out for yourselves. Um, and I hope you have a good day, night, evening, whatever your time zone is. Don't mind me, I am <laughs> gathering up the cards as I talk to you. And if you are watching this on Twitch, thank you so much. I uh, hope uh, you enjoyed and drop a follow or a subscribe as I am affiliate so I can take subscriptions. And if you are watching this later on YouTube, also remember to subscribe and drop a like. Uh, and any information will be in the description down below. And yeah, I think I think I've said everything I need to say. <laughs> uh, so hope whatever time zone you are in, day, night, evening, I uh, hope it is a good one. Remember to hydrate. As we said, fresh water is great. Perfect. <laughs> uh, the mine is not spring water. It is filtered tap water of a house. Spring water would be delicious. Um, and yeah, so I hope you come back again for more gaming as a typical Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> no water or better than no water. Yes. Oh, have water, but make sure it is fresh water, not salt water. Uh, not water with a bunch of crap in it. Make sure it is from a filtered source. <laughs> um, and yeah, so what was I say? Yes, come back on another Wednesday or uh, wait for the VOD later on YouTube. And yeah, make sure you check out all my other stuff as well. Uh, I release my schedule every Monday. I am variety streamer. I do variety stuff as much as I can. <laughs> oh, and tomorrow's my birthday. Tomorrow's my birthday. Uh, so I may not be streaming tomorrow as I'm being treated to an outing. Um, and all that jazz. So yes, I typically, well, not typically. It's been a long time. I try and stream art on a Thursday, but I don't. Uh, I haven't done it for a while and I won't be able to do it tomorrow. Um, and yeah, so I keep saying and yeah. And so I have, I don't know what else I can possibly say here. And I already wished you all a good day, night, evening for whatever time zone you are in. So get Dragon Dowser. Support it on Kickstarter May 25th. Do the, the game jam, if that is your jam. <laughs> and see y'all next time.